Hi everyone, before I start this video, make sure that you're a part of my Discord server by joining the link in the description box below. And in this video, we'll be going over A-Level Accounting 2024, February, March, Paper 3 to question number 3. This is the structured Paper 3, which consists of three questions. Each of them will be of 25 marks, and the total time limit for this paper is 1 hour 30 minutes. So ideally, you should be spending about 30 minutes in order to solve each question. And in this video as well, we'll be attempting to solve this question number 3 under 30 minutes. So without any further delay, let's get started. G Limited manufactures and imports home appliances for local sales. Manufactured goods are for low income customers while imported goods are for high income customers. Information at 31st December 2023 extracted from the books of account was as follows. We have the opening inventory of direct materials, work in progress, finished goods. And there are two different types of finished goods. The first one is imported. The second one is manufactured. All right. Then we have the non-current asset at cost for machinery and office equipment. We have the provision for depreciation at the opening date for both machinery and office equipment. We have the revenue for imported goods as well as manufactured goods. We have the purchases for imported goods as well as direct materials. We have the carriage inward on imported goods as well as direct materials. We have the direct wages, manufacturing expenses and office expenses. Further information is also available. G Limited applies a constant rate of factory profit of 20%. Inventory at 31st December 2023 was as follows. We have the direct materials, work in progress and the finished goods for important and manufactured. This is at the transfer price. For the opening date as well, it was at the transfer price. All right. Then machinery and office equipment are depreciated at the rate of 15% per annum using the reducing balance method. Let us calculate these depreciation amounts. So for machinery, this is at the reducing balance method. So we first need to calculate the netbook value. For machinery, we have the cost of 225,000 and accumulated depreciation of 107,000. So that will be 225,000 minus 107,000 times 15%, which results in the value of 17,700. And since this is the depreciation on machinery, this will be included within the manufacturing account. Then we have office equipment. Again, this is at the reducing balance method. So we first need to calculate the netbook value. The cost is 124,000. The accumulated depreciation is 74,000. So 124 minus 74 times 15%. This results in the depreciation charge of 7,500. Okay, let us move towards the first question. We need to prepare the manufacturing account for the year ended 31st December 2023. Remember that this is for G Limited. We are preparing the manufacturing account. And this is for the year ended 31st December. 2023 okay we can start with the cost of direct materials consumed for that we need to start with the opening inventory of direct materials so opening direct materials inventory then we need to add the purchases of direct materials And in this case, there was no information regarding purchase returns, so we can skip that. But we did have information regarding carriage inwards on direct materials. We need to add that. And finally, we need to subtract the closing direct materials inventory. Okay, let's take a look at our information for the values. For the opening direct materials, we have 46,000. For purchases of direct materials, we have 133,000. For carriage inwards on direct materials, we have 6,900. And for the closing direct materials, we have 36,200. Let's write it down. 46,000 for opening inventory. 133,000 for purchases. Carriage inwards of 6,900. Closing inventory of 36,200. Now we can get the cost of direct materials consumed. Okay. 
that will be 46,000 plus 133,000 plus 6,900 minus 36,200, which results in 149,700. Now we need to add any other direct cost to this value so that we can calculate the prime cost. The only other direct cost in this case is of direct wages of 148,000. Let's add it. So that is the direct wages. Now we can add these two in order to get the prime cost. So that's 149,700 plus 148,000 which results in 297,700. Now we need to add the factory overheads. The first factory overhead in this case is depreciation on machinery of 17,700. Let's add it. So 17,700 for depreciation on machinery. Now we need to add any other factory related expenses. So we have manufacturing expenses of 45,400 and that should be all. So 45,400 for manufacturing expenses. Now the next step is to figure out the total of prime costs and factory overheads. That will be 297,700 plus 17,700 plus 45,400 which results in 360,800. Okay, after this we need to make adjustment for our work in progress. So what we do is we add the opening work in progress inventory. And subtract the closing work in progress inventory. Let's take a look at our information. For the opening work in progress, we have the value of 21,000. For the closing work in progress, we have the value of 25,800. So we need to add 21,000, subtract 25,800. After adjusting the work in progress, we will get the value for cost of production. That will be 360,800 plus 21,000 minus 25,800, which results in 356,000. Now the next step is to add the factory profit so that we get the transfer value. Okay, for factory profit, we need to refer to our rate of factory profit, which in this case was of 20%. So the factory profit will just be the cost of production of 356,000 times 20%, which results in the value of 71,200. Now the transfer value will be 356,000 plus 71,200, which results in 427,200. That is all for our manufacturing account. Let's move to us the next part. We now have additional information. The profit for the year before office expenses and depreciation of office equipment amounted to 289,800. So this is just the gross profit itself. But since this also involves the manufacturing account, we will have adjusted the factory profit as well as the adjustment of unrealized profit to this value. Now we need to prepare a statement to calculate, showing clearly the cost of sales, how much of this amount was derived from importing and manufacturing. So for this one, we just have to create two different statements to show the gross profit from importing, the gross profit from manufacturing, and for the manufacturing one, we also need to show the adjustment of factory profit and the unrealized profit. Let's start with the statement for importing. We just have to include the revenue and the cost of sales only for importing in this case. So we can start with the revenue. Let's take a look at the above information. The revenue for imported goods was of 378,400. Now for cost of sales, we will have the opening inventory. Purchases. We also had the carriage inwards, so we need to add that as well. And finally, subtract the closing inventory. All right. So the values for the opening inventory of imported goods, that will be 36,000. The purchases of imported goods, 
will be 226,000. The carriage inwards on imported goods will be 4,200. And the closing inventory for imported goods will be of 39,600. Let's write it down. So our opening inventory was of 36,000. Purchases was of 226,000. Carriage inwards was of 4,200. And the closing inventory was of 39,600. Now the total cost of sales will be 36,000 plus 226,000 plus 4,200 minus 39,600, which results in 226,600. Now we can easily calculate the gross profit. That will be 378,400 minus 226,600, which results in 151,800. That is all for importing. Now we need to repeat the same process for manufacturing as well. We can start with the revenue. And let's take a look above. The revenue for manufactured goods was of 498,000. So revenue 498,000. Now we can move towards cost of sales. So in this case, we need to include the opening finished goods inventory at the transfer value. So opening finished goods. Then we need to add the transfer value. Then we need to subtract the closing finished goods again at the transfer value. Let's take a look at the information. The opening finished goods at transfer price was 56,400. The closing finished goods at transfer price was 51,600. And the transfer value we calculated from the manufacturing account was 427,200. Let's write it down. So opening finished goods was of 56,400. Transfer value 427,200. And the closing finished goods was of 51,600. So the cost of sales will be 56,400 plus 427,200 minus 51,600, which results in 432,000. Now this will result in the gross profit of 498,000 minus 432,000, which is 66,000. Now after this, we add the factory profit. And the factory profit in this case is of 71,200. Then we also need to make adjustment for unrealized profit. Okay, so for unrealized profit, we need to calculate the opening and closing profit. In this case, we have the transfer price, right? And whenever we have the transfer price, we can calculate the profit as transfer price divided by 1 plus the factory rate multiplied by the factory rate. So for the opening provision for unrealized profit, the transfer price given is 56,400. We know that the rate of factory profit is 20%. So our profit will be 9,400. Then for the closing provision for unrealized profit, the transfer price is 51,600. Again, the rate of factory profit is still 20%, which results in the value of 8,600. All right, we can clearly see that there is a decrement in provision for unrealized profit, and the decrement is of 9,400 minus 8,600, which is of 800. And whenever there is the decrement in unrealized profit, we have to treat this as part of an income. So we need to add the value of 800 here. So that we get the total profit from manufacturing. That will be 66,000 plus 71,200 plus 800, which results in the value of 138,000. That is all for the second part of this question. Let's move to the third one. We now need to calculate the profit for the year. All right. So for profit for the year, we can start from given profit. which was of 289,800. And now we need to subtract the expenses that have not yet been included, such as the office expenses and depreciation of office equipment. Let's take a look at the information. 
the office expenses was of 204,000, whereas the depreciation on office equipment was of 7,500. Let's write it down. So we first have the office expenses of 204,000. We then have depreciation on office equipment of 7,500 which will give the profit for the year and the profit for the year will be 289,800 minus 204,000 minus 7,500 which is 78,300 let's move towards the next part a director is of the opinion that the profit for the year for 2023 can be improved by increasing the rate of factory profit to 25% we need to explain the impact on the profit for the year for 2023 of increasing the rate of factory profit to 25% in 2023. So always remember that increasing the factory profit rate will have no impact on the total profit for the year. So that's the first thing we can write down. Increasing the factory profit rate will have absolutely no impact on the profit for the year of 2023 as the factory profit included in transfer value is cancelled out by the factory profit added to gross profit then similarly the change in unrealized profit will be cancelled out by the adjustment of unrealized profit to the gross profit. And this is the reason why the there will be no change in profit for the year when there is any change in rate of factory profit let's write it down therefore the net change in profit for the year will always be zero when any change is made to the rate of factory profit that is all for the fourth part let's move towards the next one g limited is experiencing serious increases in costs of the imported goods and has increased the selling price many high income customers are complaining about these increased prices the directors are considering manufacturing home appliances for these customers to keep the prices low and maintain their profits we need to advise the directors whether or not they should manufacture home appliances for the high income customers to maintain the profits and we need to justify our answer this is a five marks okay so the first thing we can write down is whether or not these manufactured goods will be preferred by the existing high income customers let's write it down will the manufactured goods be preferred by the existing customers or the existing high income customers secondly will the company be able to source 
quality materials for such high income customers because remember the manufactured goods for now is for low income customers let's write it down will the company be able to source the quality materials for such high income customers then the next thing we can consider is how now manufacturing the goods might result in a lower cost as compared to the cost of importing those goods so the selling price might also be lower that could be an advantage manufacturing the goods might result in a lower cost as compared to importing it so the selling price might also be lower okay then the next thing we can consider is additional cost that might be incurred such as the purchase of new machinery staff training and so on so additional costs might be incurred such as purchase of machinery or staff training and such now we need to make a final decision so i would suggest the directors to go ahead with manufacturing home appliances for the high income customers in order to maintain the profits but only if the quality direct materials and skilled labor are available because if those two things are not available then it means that high income customers might not like the quality of the goods that they have manufactured and that could further result in decreased profits we do not want that let's write it down the directors should manufacture home appliances for the high income customers to maintain the profits if quality direct materials and skilled labor are available all right that is all for the fifth part as well as this entire question if you found this video useful make sure that you like the video and leave a comment below and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future thank you